Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is Azure Logic Apps Standard Edition and its dev experience. We're going to take a first look at it. Let's go. All right, so why is this episode important? So Azure Logic Apps Standard gives organizations another option when deploying integration solutions. For some organizations, their costs may become more predictable than if they were using the consumption-based model and potentially less than if they were using ICE, the integration service environment itself. Now, when it does come to the standard SKU, there's going to be more options for deployment as well. So with standard edition, you're going to be able to go ahead and deploy on-prem in other public clouds, obviously in Azure, and then also in the Edge as well. Another interesting capability that gets unlocked is this idea of stateful versus stateless execution. So sometimes you may want to be able to lower the latency with some of these scenarios, especially if you're doing like reads against a specific data source and you don't need all of the sort of run history and, and all of the, the rich logging that you do find in the platform already. You can go ahead and deploy that as stateless so that you've got less demands on writing to storage and essentially checkpoints along the way, which is going to be interesting for, for some scenarios itself. Another thing that's pretty interesting about standard, which we're going to see in this video, is how we can use Visual Studio Code and take advantage of a local debug support, uh, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead, let's take a closer look at the dev experience. Okay, so before we can get started building, there's a series of prerequisites that we do need to go ahead and install. So I thought I would go ahead and list all of those out in this video. Each of the links that you're going to see on screen are going to be in the description, so don't worry about trying to type those out. So naturally, the first thing that we're going to need, if you don't already have it, is Visual Studio Code. That is going to be our IDE when we talk about building Logic App Standard on a local dev environment. So we're going to go ahead, download that, choose your flavor, go ahead and install it, and then we'll get to the next uh, prerequisite here. So the next prerequisite is called Azureite, and what this does, it's actually pretty important for us. So when we go ahead and, and run our Logic App Standard instances, uh, we're going to do that in our own dev environment on our local machine. So this is something that you're not able to do today with the consumption plan. So as a result, you need some underlying sort of tech in order to support the execution. So what we're going to do is leverage Azureite, which is going to provide us with blob, queue, and table storage uh, capabilities, which will allow for our runtime to write data to those storage facilities. So this is something that we do need. We need to actually start it uh, prior to any sort of debugging session that we do want to go ahead and execute. Uh, so go ahead and install this. Uh, it's available in the marketplace, as you can see in the link here on the slide. Another one is Azure Account. So we're going to link our, essentially when we're inside of Visual Studio Code, we're going to connect into Azure and we're going to go ahead and do so through this extension. This is going to give us essentially Cloud Shell service accessibility and an integrated terminal. We'll be able to see our subscriptions and resource groups. And this is important when it comes time to creating connections. Uh, we need to be able to do that um, inside of Studio, and as a result, we need to be able to connect out to, um, to Azure itself. Another prerequisite that we do need is C Sharp, so if this isn't already included, go ahead and install it. And then another one that we're going to need is the Azure Functions Core Tools. And so this is what's going to allow us to be able to have a runtime. And so one of the, the benefits of Logic App Standard is this portability. And the portability that allows us to run in, you know, another public cloud, on-prem, in a container, on the edge, is through this function's runtime itself. And so this becomes naturally an important feature so that we can actually go ahead and leverage this runtime when debugging and testing out our logic apps. And then naturally, of course, we do need Azure Logic Apps Standard. So this is going to be a different extension than the other Logic Apps extensions for VS Code. 
but do look for this one. This is going to help us with building and testing out our logic apps. Now you will know that you're in a good spot if you go ahead and click on the extensions icon here in sort of the left nav and then you go ahead and see all of these prerequisites installed. If you see them installed, you will be in good shape. Um, Azure resources and static web apps, those were there before. Uh, those weren't part of the, the downloads that we needed to do manually ourselves. Now, a few optional components that you want to call out here as well. So within Logic Apps, there is the ability to do some inline scripting. If you want to use the inline scripting, you need to go ahead and install Node.js 10, 11, or 12. Uh, so here's a link to go ahead and install Node.js if you don't already have it. And then another optional component is ngrok, and we're going to use this for forwarding HTTP requests. Now, this is a little bit interesting in the sense that when you typically go ahead and build a logic app that has an HTTP trigger, and that's, say, in the consumption plan, you're going to have a URL endpoint that's registered in the cloud, and you can then subsequently go ahead and call that from pretty much anywhere. Now, if we're going to do local debugging, um, you know, we need to be able to go ahead and call that endpoint, but by default, that's going to be a local endpoint. Essentially, it's going to be like a local host endpoint. So if we wanted the ability to go ahead and call that from, say, a remote machine while we're still doing our, our troubleshooting and debugging, we need essentially some sort of forwarding capability, and we can go ahead and take advantage of that through NGROC. So what you need to do, go ahead, sign up. Once you've signed up, you're going to be able to go ahead and download NGROC. It's just a small little utility. You unzip it. Then what you need to do is get the token from your NGROC web page that you're going to see uh, when you're downloading the tool itself. You'll open up a command line tool. You'll paste your token in. And then what you can go ahead and do is run NGROC. And you're going to see essentially uh, almost like a web server spun up and being able to accept requests. So I went ahead and ran this command ngrok http 7071 and then what I see is I've got both an http and an https endpoint that is publicly accessible that I can now go ahead and hit through Postman and it's going to resolve back to my local endpoint. Now depending upon your machine, depending upon where you're doing this, you might be able to get away with just making local host connections anyways. And so it's kind of up to you whether or not you want to go through the NGROC route or if you want to just can go ahead and hit localhost because that will work for you. But if uh, localhost doesn't work, you're going to want to go ahead and use NGROC and that's why I'm calling this out as an optional component. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's kick off a demo and see how we can build kind of like a hello world type experience uh, or interface using Logic App Standard and the local developer experience. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to expose an HTTP endpoint that's going to take a payload and it will then parse that payload and call a Azure, sorry, a SharePoint list create item action. And once that item has been inserted into the list successfully, we'll go ahead and return an acknowledgement back to the service. So what I've got here is I'm in Visual Studio Code right here. I'm going to go ahead and click on Explorer. And then I'm going to go ahead and open a folder. I've created a folder previously. And this folder is going to be the basis for our solution here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select my Azure subscription. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a new project. And I'm going to use the uh, folder that I previously specified. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a stateful workflow. Now what is interesting about Logic App Standard is that we can go ahead and take advantage of stateless workflows. So if we have like request response type interactions that don't require all of the sort of the storage and the run history um, because we're simply doing lookups but we want it to be more performant we can go ahead and do that through a stateless workflow workflow but for today we're just going to go with stateful workflow 
we need to provide this a, a pro with a name. We're just going to call it uh, access request. Click on our Explorer button up here. We're going to see that we now have some files that have been created for us. Now, the first thing we want to go ahead and do is we're going to see this workflow.json file. This essentially is our logic app. But what we want to do is we want to go ahead and use the designer. So we can go ahead and click on open in designer. And then we're going to see the graphical editor that we're used to seeing in the Azure portal. So that'll take a few seconds to load. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, choose if we're going to use connectors from Azure or not. If so, we need to then go ahead and provide a resource group in an appropriate region for that. And essentially what we're going to need to do is we're going to still need to be able to create connections and hence the tie-in to Azure itself. So here we've got Logic Apps. This is the new designer, so new look and feel a little bit different than what you may have seen in the past, depending upon the last time you've used Logic Apps. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is just type in request and we're going to find our request trigger. Now what we can go ahead and do is provide a JSON schema for our sample payload. And I've got one ready, so I'm just going to go ahead and paste that in. That will create a JSON schema for us, which is good. Now, next up, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and add an action. In this case, we're going to go ahead and find that SharePoint connector. And it's going to be in Azure itself, not a built-in operation. And then what we can do is find it and then we'll look for our create item. So here's our create item creation. Now we'll go ahead and select our SharePoint site and our list name. And then here's where we can go ahead and add those parameters. And then here we'll go ahead and just do some simple mapping from our request trigger, the message body that was received. So we'll just do some simple data mapping here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to provide an HTTP response back to the caller itself. So here what we're going to do is just provide a simple response and we'll go ahead and hit save itself. Okay, so at this point we're ready to go ahead and test out our interface here. Now what we do need to do is make sure that Azure Write is running. Now it is already running just from sort of previous um, things that I was doing, but just to show you what you need to do is here, hit command palette. I'm just going to close it down and then what we'll do is we'll reopen it. So we can now go and reopen it. So we're just going to issue Azure Write start. And then we're going to see that on the bottom here that it's, it's going to start up and, and we're going to be able to go ahead and run it. Now, what we now want to do is go ahead and start the debugger. So we just want to go ahead and click on run. Now, before I get too far down that path, one thing to, to know about is we need to know what our URL is, like our runtime URL is for our HTTP trigger. So what we can do is go ahead and click on this essentially refresh button at the project level. And then what we can do is right mouse click on our workflow.json and click overview. Now, when we do click on that overview link, what we're going to see now is now we have our callback URL. So we can go ahead and copy this out. And then what we can do is take this over to Postman and then go ahead and make our call. Now, once we go ahead and paste that in, we can now go ahead and call. Do make sure that you do set a header that has the appropriate content type of application JSON. And then when we go ahead and hit submit, we can see that we have a 201 HTTP status code and we have access now provided. So that works great. That was using localhost. Now let's flip this around and use the ngrok URL that we had uh, talked about earlier. So now I'm going to take this URL and then replace the local host with it. Everything will remain the same, uh, including the SAS key that we need to include as part of our request as well. 
So there we go, it went ahead and ran, and in this case it was relayed up through the NGROC service itself as opposed to the local connection itself. All right, so that concludes today's episode. Hope you found it interesting. Uh, Logic App Standard is definitely something to watch for, for sure. I think uh, customers are actually always looking for flexibility in terms of how they operate and manage all of their interfaces and automation. So uh, it was interesting to take a look to see what uh, the team's been up to and uh, you know, just giving customers some optionality to see what works best for them, whether it's consumption, ice, or in this case, uh, standard. So interesting to see. So thanks again for watching this video. If you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead and do so at Weirzy. Naturally on YouTube, likes, subscribes, comments, always welcome as well. Thanks and we'll see you again next week. Bye.